So here's a map of North America, and the server is Toronto. Where is Toronto? Here? Is Toronto? Is that right? I think so. Um, so if you were to imagine what uh, the distribution of players, the social, literally social topography of players would be in North America, you might start by looking at the macro, macro situation. And North America has very uh, decently well-developed internet infrastructure. Um, it has relatively low cost access to the net, and there's almost no language barrier, at least in, in, in the United States and Canada for the vast majority of, of players. So you might imagine that the map would stretch uh, across North America, and you'd have people in California playing with people in Toronto. Um, so what happens, if we spend a bit of time mapping out the distribution of players across this map of North America, we actually find something much different. Um, so what I've done, and you'll see in a second, is I've taken... Uh, the IP addresses of, of 100 players on the server that have over 1,000 connections. And I'm speculating that these people are the people that are most likely to be involved in the kind of social relationships that we're interested in exploring as anthropologists. Um, and mapped it onto this image of North America. And forgive me, this is with paint, my <laughs> wonderful lack of skills. Um, and what it actually looks like is something like this. And what we see here is that the 100 players are actually, for the most part, clustered around a very limited geographic area in North America. Um, and while the U.S.-Canada border, as you might predict, has become somewhat irrelevant in who's playing on this server, um, the topography of play is still highly circumscribed. So to emphasize this, we can see only four players out of 100 here come from outside of, of North America. And those are the four red marks flying off towards Europe, where those four people connected from. Um, and in fact, it's even more limited than that, with the vast majority of players playing in the Northeast. Um, what this social topography is fundamentally circumscribed by, then I argue, as I've mapped here, is, is by ping. And players with a ping of under 50 milliseconds, 1 20th of a second, make up 85%, make up 85 out of 100 of these players. Um, so the way I like to describe it is essentially that individual servers are, are kind of material social gravity wells that, that pull people in within that infrastructural network. And what we see then is this map of North America being reimagined or redrawn in a way that makes network fidelity uh, the basis for social fidelity. Um, so to give you another perspective uh, of how speed and network infrastructures shape social topographies, uh, this is a map built from out of uh, Hangzhou in China. And uh, the way I've done this map is instead of getting the IPs uh, of an individual server and mapping them out, I've, I've taken what a player connecting from Hangzhou would see as their options um, for server, server connectivity. And it's this one client called the Haofang client. Um, there's many different clients that people use in China to connect to CS. Um, and as you can see here, um, the list of servers actually only included these uh, provinces. There was no option to connect outside of, of what's considered um, China in this server. And I, I don't think it was a particularly political decision. I think it was a practical business decision in terms of getting people to play on your servers, um, um, using your client, and, and keeping them in the system so that if they're going to play other games, they're going to use your client in your system. So, um, so you can see here that uh, obviously uh, where Hangzhou is in Zhejiang province is green. Um, and the surrounding provinces, for the most part, have uh, you know, a very uh, good uh, ping, and then it kind of fades to yellow and then red. Um, so interestingly, too, there's also some black spots where there's nothing. There's no option uh, for a server to connect in that area. And uh, that's in Inner Mongolia, Tibet, and Jiangxi province, I think. Um, and what this does, in a sense, is, is it doesn't stop people from playing or who are from there. It just doesn't mean they don't have a server specifically named after their own, their own region. So in a sense, it, it, it if they are using this particular client, it will scatter them to a certain extent into, into nearby other provinces to play. Um, so, um, so and I think this combination of geographic restriction, server location, and ping has a really interesting possible social impact when we consider the presence of, let's say, the server in Taiwan. And, and Taiwan's there, there's a, there's a game server, everyone can connect to it. Um, and, and it has a really good uh, ping for people who are playing from Hangzhou. So uh, no doubt people are playing on, on this server. And 
Um, the ability for people to play on this server, I think, I mean, it, it opens up with the possibility for exactly what we, what we describe as anthropologists in online worlds, which is uh, new collaborative social relations with people, with strangers, that they may never have the, the opportunity to meet in, in their daily lives due to a number of circumstances. And I think this new material social effect that situates Chinese CS um, and other games as a new way of interacting with otherwise socially, politically restricted others um, is, is something that uh, is opening up these really dynamic new pathways. And, and uh, I'm really happy because tomorrow, um, Ho Lin Lin, if I pronounced the name wrong, um, is actually giving a speech on just that topic about um, Chinese gamers and, and Taiwanese gamers playing together on, on servers. So I think uh, they're going to do a much better justice than, than I could. Um, who, oh, and I haven't done the detailed ethnographic research for that, and I, I'm really interested in, in what, uh, what they have to say. So uh, in conclusion, um, I think there's four things I've argued are important for understanding the social topographies of online worlds. And first, simply, is that materiality matters. And it's something it's, it's far too easy to ignore when you're looking at social, um, social life. Um, and the software, hardware, infrastructure, they, they come to intersect in a way that I think we can argue that uh, for some games, and this applies to World of Warcraft in, in interesting ways as well, in terms of server location. Uh, there's a, a whole bunch of interesting stuff online about Australian gamers fighting for servers in Australia because they're forced to play World of Warcraft um, in a way that, although the pings are much more tolerable, you can play up to 300 milliseconds. When you, once you get into high-level World of Warcraft, it becomes completely unacceptable. And there's actually formed a kind of Australian diaspora in World of Warcraft <laughs> where, where, they, where Australian players have huddled together on certain North American servers based on the West Coast and kind of pushed everyone else out and made these Australian communities in online worlds. Um, anyways. Sorry, I've gone off topic now. Um, so what I'm arguing then is, is network fidelity and social fidelity are, are intrinsically entwined online. Um, and, and the way this becomes reflected in social topographies in terms of CS is that what happens is that social topographies orbit the gravity wells of, of particular servers and, and server nodes and, and other material constructs. Um, and while... In this way, games like CS show the tensions between the kind of globalizing power of, of online worlds and the, the provincial nature of social reality um, in, in the 21st century. Um, so while, while greatly expanding the literal geographic scope of social relations, uh, the logic uh, games still remain bound to specific intersections of infrastructure, server clients, the logic of individual games like CS um, and individual choice, of course. Um, so I hope this talk has demonstrated uh, that the sustained exploration of, the, of the, this material social intersection is really needed as part of our academic uh, toolkit um, we use to explain the social topographies of interaction. I think uh, topographies that will help us understand all these new and dynamic uh, strands of human interaction as they, as they continue to pop up in new places. So thanks.